If you're an executor of an estate, you have certain duties to perform by law, and if you fail to perform them, you can be held responsible and liable. It's important to understand that you do not have to accept an executorship. You can pass. But once you accept it, you got to get it right. So before I go any further, if you're an executor of an estate and you're feeling a little overwhelmed, look for a link below this YouTube video for a free executor of an estate checklist. It's geared towards Pennsylvania, but it will give you a good guideline in any other state. First thing you want to do, secure the estate, the house, and any other assets. Change the locks, secure the bank accounts, and anything else, and make sure nobody can remove anything, particularly heirlooms that are valuable. Unless there's a co-executor, this is perfectly within your rights as an executor of an estate. Most of the problems executors of the estate get into is something called breach of fiduciary duty. It essentially happens in five different ways. First, late fees. Assuming there's enough liquid funds in the estate, you must pay the mortgage on time, the utilities, any other bills that come in to avoid additional costs that could take money away from the estate and the heirs. Two, capital gains tax. There's something in real estate called time is of the essence, and it is a factor here for executors of estates. If you drag your feet and cause a delay and hold onto the property too long, the IRS will consider an investment and assess, assess capital gains tax. doesn't matter if the house never had a tenant. That's not their definition of an investment property. You can buy a property for 20 years, hold it, any of those gains when it's sold, Subject to capital gains tax. Three, devaluing the house. Assuming there are funds in the estate account for any repairs, you can't just ignore them. A good example would be a broken pipe or a leak in the roof. Those repairs can be minor, but if left unchecked, cause major damage and major loss. Four, other taxes besides capital gains. You have to file a final 1040 for the decedent and Pennsylvania estate tax forms. There are deadlines, and missing those deadlines cause, can cause penalties which can be put back on you if you're the cause of those dead, uh, missing those deadlines. Keep in mind, I'm not an attorney. I'm a broker with 30 years experience. And people often ask me, do I need an attorney? Well, the answer is no. You don't really need an attorney until you really need an attorney. And prevention is better than cure. The fifth biggest problem I see is when people try to commingle funds. If you're an executive of estate, you may be tempted to take money from the estate, put it into one of your accounts, and pay for everything from there. It's not a good idea. You should establish an estate account with a local bank, which can be of your choice unless the will stipulates something different. If, during the course of the administ administration of the estate, you incur fees and expenses, you are entitled to get those back with very few exceptions, but do not commingle funds. If you have to sell an estate house, check out my video on getting a house ready for sale. This could save you thousands of dollars and a lot of headaches. As always, reach out if you need any help selling an estate or if you have any other questions. And as always, thanks for watching.